Hi there. In the last lesson, we looked at how a distributed worker for Spark performs cross-validation. In this, the final lesson of this class, we'll touch briefly on a couple of knowledge flow templates that we haven't had time to look at so far. And we'll leave you with some things to look at for distributed worker if you wish to take it further. Here we are back in the knowledge flow. If we open up the templates menu again and scroll down a little bit here, we can see a template called Computer Correlation Matrix and Run PCA, where PCA stands for Principal Component Analysis. So let's open this one. I'll make it a little bit larger. All right. So what we have is our trusty ARF header Spark job, which loads our hypothyroid data again. And we have a little step here called the correlation matrix Spark job. And we have an image viewer and a text viewer attached to that. So that suggests that this job will produce uh, some kind of an image that we can take a look at and also some textual results. In the dialog for the correlation matrix Spark job here, we have a few options mainly related to exactly what sort of matrix is going to be computed. So we can compute either a, a correlation matrix or a covariance matrix. And we have an option to run principal components analysis. So uh, the algorithm for principal components analysis can compute the principal components using either a correlation matrix as input or a covariance matrix. All right, let's run this now and see what it produces. takes a few seconds to run. And it's finished. OK, let's open up the text viewer. So in the text viewer, we have the result of uh, the uh, principal components analysis and the correlation matrix that was computed. We can see that the correlation matrix and the principal component analysis only involve the numeric attributes that are present in the hypothyroid data. Let's take a quick look in the image viewer now. If we open up the image viewer, we can see that we have a graphical heat map representation of our correlation matrix, where the colors indicate the magnitude of the correlations between the attributes and all the numeric attributes in the hypothyroid data. All right, let's take a look at one more example before we finish with distributed Weka. So in the templates menu here, we have a job called run k-means parallel. So k-means parallel is, as the name suggests, a parallel version of the k-means algorithm. So for clustering in distributed WACA, unfortunately, we can't use the trick of creating a voted ensemble like we did with, in the classification case. It's not possible to make a voted ensemble out of separate clustering models. So this is why there is only k-means available in distributed WACA so far, as it's the only clustering algorithm that has been uh, implemented in a distributed fashion specifically for distributed Weka. This job takes a little while to run, so through the magic of video editing, I've executed it in between cuts to save a little bit of time. So it actually takes longer to run than sequential Weka does if you were to run k-means in the Explorer on the hypothyroid data set. And this is simply due to the fact that there is a certain amount of overhead involved in Spark communication, the creation of its RDD data structures, and so forth. And that overhead actually outweighs the speed gained through uh, parallel processing in this local case when we're just using the cores that are available on our CPU. If our data set was much larger and we were running on a real cluster, then we would have a true benefit from using a distributed approach. In the text viewer, we can see the clustering results for k-means, which look exactly the same or are in the same format as if you were to run k-means in standalone Weka on your desktop. So where to from here? 
Experimenting with distributed Weka in local mode using small datasets is the best way to get familiar with the capabilities of it and to explore what it has to offer. However, if you want to process larger datasets, then you'll need to run on a cluster. So we'll take a little look at what's available out on the web to help you get started in that area. The first place to go for information is the main Apache Spark website. So let's take a look at that first. Okay, uh, under the documentation uh, section here, we can find the uh, documentation for the latest release of Spark. And if we go to that page, and there is information on downloading, running some examples, and then down here a little ways, we have information on launching on a cluster. So the first thing to look at is the overview of cluster mode. So this will describe exactly how a cluster is uh, configured and set up to run. And then there are uh, various different types of clusters that you can run Spark on. So the simplest is called a standalone mode. And there is a documentation section here on, on that mode. That would be the one to start with first. There are several other modes of uh, clustered running for Spark, uh, including something called Mesos and Yarn. So these are different ways of managing the machines in a cluster. But the standalone mode is the simplest. There are a number of blogs on the web that step you through the process of setting up a standalone cluster on a single machine. So if we search for Apache Spark standalone cluster install, and there are a number of hits in Google for uh, information on setting up a cluster. So one that's particularly concise, or at least I thought was concise and could be a good place to start, is this one here. So if we take a look at that, you can see a very short introduction to getting started with a Spark cluster running on a single machine. So this is different from what we've been looking at so far, where we've been running in local mode. That's where the entirety of Spark runs in a single JVM process. The uh, standalone cluster running on a single machine involves multiple separate Java processes and they communicate as if they were running on, on different machines. So this tutorial is a reasonably short introduction to getting started with that. Well, that's it for this lesson. Today we took a look at how you can use distributed Weka to compute a correlation matrix in Spark, and then use that correlation matrix as input to a principal component analysis. We also took a look at the k-means algorithm running in a distributed fashion inside of Spark. And we took a little look at information on setting up Spark clusters. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning about how to use Weka in a distributed processing environment. And now I'll leave you with some links to further information on distributed Weka and on Apache Spark.